I like change and I like uh, learning new things. I like to uh, challenge myself. Uh, but first of all, you know, I, I get tired of doing the same thing again and again. To put it simple, the people who play music that you call progressive or progressive metal, I don't think it's progressive. I don't think they are progressive. I think they're conservative. What I'm saying is progressive uh, means uh, that you favor change. That's the fun thing about the term progressive because it really means forward thinking, changing, modern. Uh, but the, peop the people who play what we call progressive music or especially progressive metal, to me, sounds unmodern, they sound old, they sound conservative, and they are afraid of changing. I learn new things by, you know, getting the band, setting up all the stuff on top of a fucking hill in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the mountains in Norway, and playing a show where nobody's ever played a show. You fly up, two tons of equipment, PA system, backline, uh, power generator, mixing console, and you have the audience walk f on foot five hours up, and you play a show on top of like a, a steep hill, 700 meters, 2,000 feet straight down. If you fall off, you're dead. And we even didn't know, we did this last summer, and we weren't even sure that the cliff could take the, the amount of equipment or the heavy bass vibrations. So that's the kind of challenges we love to do as a band and also me as a person. And you learn a lot from that. It's been a pretty drastic progression. So it's 15 years since our first album was released, which was an acoustic jazz quartet album in the vein of uh, John Coltrane, 69, 71, that, that kind of era. We recorded it with two microphones and a tape recording. No edits, no nothing, really like dogmatic, uh, late 60s jazz music. And then we got tired of that. And instead of having uh, or limit ourselves to a jazz quartet instrumentation, we had a like, church organ, operatic singers, electric guitars, drum machines. Uh, and we like went wild in the studio overdubbing it. And then came Black Jazz in 2010, which was a, another huge step, probably the biggest we've done. And, and kind of all planets aligned for us with that album, I think, musically. Everything fell into place. We threw out uh, a lot of stuff that we felt wasn't necessary and we focused on fusing jazz and metal specific with energetic free jazz. We included uh, um, an industrial uh, production to it. After 2005, I started rediscovering newer metal bands like Dillinger, Escape Plan, Meshuga, stuff like that, uh, that, that um, led me to, you know, incorporate metal elements into our into Shining's music again. I've kept the sax in the music and I've worked a lot on on how to incorporate the sax in metal music. That's a hard thing to do. I've been trying for 20 years to figure out how to play sax with metal music. The way John Coltrane often uses his sax in the late period, like he was playing uh, like a cell of notes, like three notes or four notes, and repeating them, changing them around, but not, not adding new notes. So you choose, instead of using 12 notes, you use five of them or three of them, and you repeat them, and then you choose another set of notes. You gotta have a certain setup, you gotta have a sound that is um, loud, heavy, and, uh, and sharp enough, works well with 
the loud, heavy, abrasive music that you're playing to. So you gotta have a mouthpiece that that has this brilliant, sharp tone with a lot of overtones. So you gotta have a reed that can stand, that, that has a dynamic range so you could play loud. Because like a sax, when you play it soft and you play it when you play it loud, it doesn't only get softer or, or, or louder. It also changes the, the tone of the... Of, it changes the harmonics of the tones. And the saxophone, if you play it loud and you got the right setup, it sounds very much like a distorted guitar. I don't know if the fact that we're a different band is the reason we've made it as far as we have or the reason we haven't made it further.